This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of bladder cancer. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, let's discuss what the bladder is and some risk factors for getting bladder cancer. So the bladder is an organ located in the pelvis. It is a hollow organ and it's responsible for storing urine. So the kidneys produce urine, the urine goes down the ureters, and then the urine collects and is stored in the bladder. Now there are multiple types of bladder cancer. One of them, and the most common in the Western world, is urothelial carcinoma. And the most common in the rest of the world is squamous cell carcinoma. We'll talk about why there is a difference here in a moment. So what are some of the risk factors for getting bladder cancer? Some of the most common risk factors for getting bladder cancer include smoking, exposure to chemicals like aniline dyes, formaldehyde, even arsenic in drinking water. Utilizing cyclophosphamide as a treatment can lead to or increase the risk of bladder cancer. Chronic bladder inflammation, so using long-term catheters, can increase inflammation within the bladder and increase the risk for getting bladder cancer. Increasing age, cancer syndromes, so conditions like Lynch syndrome, for instance, and schistosomiasis or schistosoma infections, and more specifically, it's infections with schistosoma hematobium. So these are parasites that are common in other parts of the world, and they increase the risk of squamous cell carcinoma. This is why squamous cell carcinoma is more common in other parts of the world. Now, bladder cancer, depending on where in the world we're looking at it, it's fifth to seventh most common cancer. So in the United States, for instance, it's the fifth most common cancer, and in the rest of the world, it's the seventh most common cancer. It's more common in certain occupations due to some of the exposure to some chemicals. Some of the occupations that it's more likely to occur in include barbers, bartenders, beauticians, dental office workers, and dry cleaners. Now, the male to female ratio for bladder cancer is four to one. So for every four males, there's one female with bladder cancer. And it's twice as likely in Caucasians compared to other groups. And as we mentioned before, increasing age is a risk factor. So we're going to see this cancer occurring in those over 60, especially in those over 70. Now let's discuss some of the signs and symptoms of bladder cancer. By far the most common and classic symptom of bladder cancer is hematuria. So this is going to be the most common sign of bladder cancer. It's going to be blood in the urine. That's what hematuria means. It's either going to be gross or microscopic, but most of the time it's going to be gross. Gross hematuria, meaning that when you urinate, you actually see blood in your urine. You're going to see the toilet bowl full of blood. It's going to be painless, so there's no pain involved. And the reason that this happens is because the cancer within the bladder is leading to tissue damage, which then leads to bleeding. So when you urinate, there's going to be blood coming out, and this is often going to be the most common classic sign of bladder cancer. And this is so common, in fact, that this occurs in 80 to 90 percent of patients with bladder cancer. And a lot of patients who have gross hematuria, for instance, need to have a checkup to ensure that they don't have bladder cancer. Now, some other symptoms that we can see with bladder cancer include lower urinary tract symptoms. So these are considered irritative bladder symptoms. These include urinary frequency, urinary urgency, and dysuria. So urinary frequency is needing to frequently use the washroom or frequently urinate. And it's often going to be very small volumes of urine. So it's not about actually needing to urinate. It's just there's irritation of the bladder making you feel like you have to urinate. And you'll go and urinate and it'll just be small volumes of urine. Urinary urgency. So sometimes you'll just feel an urgent need to urinate. And dysuria is going to be a burning sensation or a painful sensation when urinating. So these can appear like a urinary tract infection, but a lot of times patients will also have hematuria, that blood in their urine. So that's going to be something that helps to distinguish between urinary tract infections, for instance. This is going to be due to cancer within the bladder causing irritation. About 20 to 30 percent of patients that have bladder cancer will have lower urinary tract symptoms. So it's important to note that this is going to be unexplained lower urinary tract symptoms. So a clinician might think that this is a urinary tract infection. They might do a urinalysis, but there's no sign of any infection. And also, if there has been treatment for potential UTI, the symptoms don't improve. So these are some findings with regards to these potential lower urinary tract symptoms in bladder cancer. We can also see pelvic pain as well. So pelvic pain is going to be pain in the pelvis. So it could feel like a pressure, fullness, or a bony pain this is going to be due to a growing bladder cancer. It's often going to be more in an advanced stage. We can also see flank pain as well. Flank pain is going to be pain on the sides of the abdomen. This is often, again, going to be due to that growing mass, and it leads to a referred pain. We can also see edema as well in some patients with bladder cancer. So edema is a swelling, and it's more specifically a swelling of the lower extremities. 
Now, the reason that this happens is because if there's a mass from the bladder that's growing too much, if it grows too large, it can start to impinge and block some of this lymphatic drainage, leading to a backup of that lymphatic fluid. And then we can get a spilling out of the fluid into the lower extremity. So it could be one-sided or it could be both-sided. So one leg or both legs may be affected. We can also have a pelvic mass in some patients. So in some patients, it may be palpable. So you might actually feel it, although this is going to be more rare. And this again is due to growth of the mass. So we can just get a big mass that starts to grow. It may become so large or depending on the position, it may become palpable or may be able to be felt. Again, this is going to be something that occurs in advanced disease. We can also see constitutional symptoms in bladder cancer as well. So constitutional symptoms are going to be some vague symptoms. You may not think that are related to bladder cancer, but they are. They're related to many different types of cancer. One of them is weight loss. So this weight loss is going to be unexplained and unintentional. Unexplained meaning that we don't have a a reason for why you might be losing weight. You just simply are unintentional. You're not trying to lose weight. You just are losing weight. This is going to be due to increased inflammatory cytokines. So because of that cancer, there's going to be increased inflammation. There's increased inflammatory cytokines, and these include TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. These particular cytokines will lead to a breakdown of fat and muscle, and this can lead to muscle wasting. And some other causes may include a reduced appetite. And Another important finding can be fatigue. So fatigue is less energy. It's going to be also due to increased inflammatory cytokines. Again, TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-1. These can all lead to fatigue and the patient can feel quite tired out. What is also important to point out here too, though, is that it may be related to iron deficiency anemia. Because there's gross hematuria, that blood loss from the bladder. So when you're urinating, you see blood and you're losing blood. If this continues for long periods of time, or if the blood loss is severe enough, we can start to get a depletion of our iron, and we can get iron deficiency anemia. This can also lead to fatigue and some other symptoms and signs of iron deficiency anemia as well. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please consider also joining as a member for members-only content. Thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.